ordinarily, you'd call a pistachio a pistachio. But if you're, for example, an immigrant from China and you've just seen a Ming vase, you might call a pistachio a happy nut. Because visual cues can affect language in people with multiple cultural experiences. That's according to a study in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Researchers performed various tests with students who had come to the U.S. from China. In one, the students heard a recorded conversation, in English, about campus life. But some looked at a Chinese face while they listened, while others saw a Caucasian face. The students then spoke about their own lives. And the Chinese-American students who had listened while looking at a Chinese face spoke English more slowly and less fluently than those who listened while looking at the Caucasian face. In another test, when the students were exposed to Chinese icons, they were more likely to translate from Chinese into English literally. Thus pistachios became happy nuts, which is the name in China. This phenomenon demonstrates that immigrants struggling with a new language can face unusual and unanticipated challenges. And that what you see can affect what you say. It's graduation season. And some scientists got to wondering whether the folks who shake hundreds of hands while passing out diplomas run the risk of coming away with a fistful of infectious microbes, such as Staphylococcus aureus. Goodness, turns out the risk of being passed a disease-causing bacterium while pressing the flesh is pretty remote. That's according to study in the Journal of School Nursing. The researchers swabbed the palms of 14 school officials before and after graduation. They found that before the ceremony, and even after a slathering of sanitizer, hands were home to plenty of no harmful bacteria. On the infectious scorecard, one dean brought staff aureus to a commencement. Two others at a different ceremony walked away with it. And one of those samples came from a left hand, which didn't participate in any of the meeting or greeting. So the math says that of more than 5,000 handshakes, just one may have passed along something less welcome than a sheepskin if you're graduating this spring, feel free to shake hands. While you wonder if the last person who wore that robe had anything contagious. PCR the polymerase chain reaction is a crucial tool. The DNA amplification technique is used in genome sequencing, forensics and the diagnosis of various diseases. To give researchers more genetic material to work with, a PCR instrument repeatedly heats and cools an original biological sample, which gives enzymes a chance to replicate the DNA millions of times so it can be more easily analyzed. Such sequence amplification would be a boon to diagnosis in a doctor's office especially when an infectious disease is spreading rapidly. Unfortunately, genetic tests usually take a day or two to complete. But researchers at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory aim to speed up the process. First they created an extremely fast thermal cycle in which a sample experiences 45 degrees Celsius temperature changes per second. Then they searched for DNA amplification enzymes that could operate at that thermal cycling speed. And they found two that worked without any tweaking. The technique accomplishes a billion-fold amplification in well under three minutes. 
The work is in the journal Analyst. The system could make it possible to identify food contamination virtually instantly. Or an infection before you even finish coughing. Want to remember something? Well, sleep on it. A recent study finds that the more we value a piece of information the more likely we'll review it during our sleep. And because we do that, we'll tend to remember it. Participants were shown objects with different corresponding dollar amounts on a computer screen. If participants could remember that object later on a test, they were rewarded with the associated dollar amount. Objects were also accompanied by an associated sound, for instance a cat was accompanied by a meow. After either a 90-minute nap or wake period subjects memory for low-value objects was worse than for high-value objects. But in a second experiment associated sounds were played either when the subjects were awake or asleep, as a way to trigger the memory of the object. Researchers found that low-value objects were better remembered when the associated sound was played during subjects' sleep as opposed to when they were awake. The authors believe that during sleep is when we tend to go over the day's new information, so that is why they could manipulate the memory storage of lower-value objects during sleep time rather than wake time. Gives new meaning to the term sound asleep. Life finds a way. It seems wherever we look, microbes are there, whether high in the sky or more than a kilometer deep underground. And now scientists have found signs of life more than 11 kilometers beneath the ocean's surface. Even at that crushing, frigid depth, there's eating going on. That's what a study in the journal Nature Geoscience finds. A deep sea lander with oxygen sensors found signs of microbial metabolism at the deep the ocean's deepest spot. A video camera also saw shrimp-like creatures called amphipods busy scavenging. And sediment samples brought carefully to the surface were found to contain bacteria and archaea. The scientists suggest that life this deep is possible because the region is a nutrient trap. The researchers found that the sediment at Challenger Deep is richer in food supplies than sediment at more shallow depths nearby. The research also shows that James Cameron was flat out wrong during his pioneering dive to the stark depth last year. He opined that he was looking out on a sterile, almost desert-like place but hardly anything on Earth is sterile, including deserts. That may hold true for Mars as well. Whatever the conditions, don't kite bet against the microbes. One of the most encouraging phenomena in recent years has been the growth of lifelong learning in the education sector. Nowadays, students are embarking on courses at all ages. Higher education is no longer seen as a place for the young. Mature students are appreciated and valued. Recent research has also indicated that older students are enthusiastic learners, able to contribute a number of skills and talents attributes gained from work family and other life experiences.
walking through airports, you've probably crossed paths with a few canine cops. But those dogs aren't just following their noses. They may be led astray by where their handlers think drugs and explosives are hiding, too even when there aren't any. That's according to a study in the journal Animal Cognition. The researchers recruited 18 dogs certified by law enforcement agencies. As a test site, they used four rooms in a drug and explosive free church. The researchers left the first room untouched. In the second, they taped up a sheet of red paper. In the third, they hid a few Slim Jims as a decoy. And in the fourth, they taped red paper to a stash of Slim Jims. The dog handlers were told they might encounter the scent of pot or gunpowder up to three times per room, sometimes marked with red paper. It was a flat-out lie there were no target scents. But the dog team still called 225 false alerts most often at the sight of the red paper, whether there were Slim Jims there or not. The study doesn't mean canine cops are totally unreliable in the real world. But it does imply that the dogs aren't immune to the power of suggestion and neither are their handlers. One reason Americans have such a huge weight problem? Our dish way. When faced with a bigger plate, people are inclined to heap on, and consume, more food. And plate sizes, waistlines, have expanded. But what about color? If plate area can change serving size, can we also trick ourselves into eating less by changing the color of those dishes? Cornell eating behavior expert Brian Wansink enlisted 60 unsuspecting adults to find out. Half of those attending a buffet lunch were assigned to a line with only white Alfredo sauce coated pasta, and the other half were ushered to the line with only red marinara sauce pasta. Folks in each line were randomly given a red or white plate. Those with plates that matched the color of their food helped themselves to much more than those who had plates of another color. The findings are in the Journal of Consumer Research. So next time you're buying dishes, remember that it's not just size that matters. Wanna exercise but don't have enough time? Forget slogging half an hour on the treadmill. You can burn the same number of calories with a few quick sprints on an exercise bike. So says a study presented at a meeting of the American Physiological Society. Researchers studied 10 active young men. For three days, the men ate an energy-balanced diet, meaning calories in matched calories out. Then, still on the diet. Each guy spent two days living in a sealed chamber, so researchers could monitor oxygen and CO2 levels, a way of exactly calculating calories burned. Just hanging out watching TV, the guys burn 2,200 calories a day. But they burn 200 more on days when they did five 30-second sprints on an exercise bike. And these were not laid-back efforts. The guys pedaled as hard as they could and had to take four-minute rest breaks in between. Previous studies show that sprint training like this improves the body's response to blood sugar, possibly helping to stave off diabetes. And the researchers say it may be an alternative to endurance exercise for burning calories. That is, if you don't mind really feeling the burn.
being able to travel on the cheap also depends on your ability to think laterally. You could decide that you want to spend a year visiting five neighboring countries in the developing world. That you will wild camp or stay in the cheapest of local hotels. That you'll bargain for food in the markets or cook basic meals for yourself. You may also decide to ban beer, bearing in mind that in many countries a beer costs the same as food for three meals. If your bike is in good condition, doesn't consume a lot of gas and you are happy traveling gently, then you could have a very low-priced adventure on two wheels. Thank you.